All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Steve Ruffley back in the house for a Q&A session. So I don't know if you remember, but we did a full-on interview with him, which uh, was amazing. You've got to go and check that out. We'll actually put a link below the video here for that. And we did a bit of a, a chart walkthrough as well. So this is your this was your chance to ask questions, and there's going to be a series of these. So this is the first in the series. Uh, so stay tuned for more. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit like, and you'll see these pop up in your feed. So. Today's video is all about trading big lots. So we're probably gonna jump into some chart work. We're gonna uh, talk about things as well. So it's gonna be a bit of both. So Steve, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Look, um, start off with, we're gonna get cracking into these uh, into these questions here. So these sure. are questions that have come from uh, listeners of the show, viewers of the show, and uh, they want a bit more detail around what you gave them in the in the first interview that we did. Hey folks, my sponsors, City Traders Imperium, have just launched some amazing changes to their funded trader program you gotta check out. You can now skip the whole evaluation, trade gold as well as Forex, plus they've increased the drawdown you're allowed in both the evaluation and when funded. With C2A, it's even faster and easier to reach up to $4 million in funding with a 50 to 70% profit share. Click the link in the description to find out what else has changed. So the first question and I'll, I won't leave any names here because they're all sort of like you know <laughs> abbreviated names uh, or nicknames or whatever. So the first question came in, and uh, it's do you uh, do you know how many lots are traded in forex on major on a major pair daily or major pairs daily? Right. I mean, there's obviously loads of uh, stats and statistics out there. I think you know back uh, last year they were talking about four trillion dollars were traded. Uh, in the FX markets alone, I think it's probably closer to five trillion now. Actual lot sizes. Uh, I mean, you have to remember and this. This is why kind of people get confused uh, about trading. Okay, like a lot of the UK, European um, retail uh, spread betting companies will price in pounds per point, in euros per point. So you're trading, you know, one pound per point. Uh, over here in New Zealand, uh, the broker that we're dealing with is, is lot sizes. So very much like the prop firms use back in the day, but the different lots. So if you were trading, you know, direct market access on one of the exchanges like CME, you'd have a lot size for an individual contract. Uh, you know, a retail uh, platform will create their own size, you know, per lot. So what lot you trade will be an amount of money. So it is quite difficult for the retail trader because, it, I mean, it, it is especially MT4 because although all MT4s are the same, the, all the kind of broker interactions that, that you know, customize around MT4 will have different uh, abbreviations. So, you know, the German 30 might be GER 30 on one broker. It might be, you know, DAX abbreviated another one. So people get a little bit confused between lots, pounds, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when I'm talking lot sizes, I'm just talking about lot sizes on the broker I use. And you've got to be careful because, you know, especially in things like gold, if you're clicking 10, 20, 30 lots, uh, you know, that's significantly bigger than pounds per point. So it's very important that you have a, a kind of understanding of size and strategy and understand, you know, what the uh, the lot size uh, per contract means on the broker that you're trading with, because uh, you don't want to make that mistake because, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've all done the old fat fingers and uh, you can't take it back. And it never goes your way, does it? When you do that fat finger, it's never the one that, uh, that just yeah. goes on side and you win on that big money but obviously you know that's just um part of the routine the preparation and there are good, there are good things out there to be honest you know there's a lot of things that's why i love mt4 uh there's a lot of programs out there a lot of free information like lot size calculators you might have to pay 20 bucks or something for some little uh thing that you know people have created but uh yeah the mt4 uh kind of uh you know, they're, they're kind of like blog type thing that they use. It's a bit dated. Everything on MT4 is a bit dated. I'm not going to lie about that. But it works. It's consistent. It works. It's easily accessible to everybody. So, uh, yeah, you can find all these little uh, handy little EAs and indicators and things that can help you when you're trading. And that's, again, what essentially my view charts is. That's just a collection of of indicators and, and setups that are put together in an installer and take all the hassle of uh, setting your charts up. You just click a button. It's all done for you. And I think... For me, back in the day, you know, trading on the trading floors, you'd have to find some pretty heavyweight people to uh, to do the, the, these automation and these uh, the, these kind of time saving uh, things, and it was very expensive. And I think it was one of the points I made in the um, in the interview that we did that trading is very accessible and, and pretty much free to people. You just pay the spread, and you don't have all these upfront costs that can really crush uh, an up and coming trader. 
Well, it, and I suppose that the, the the question that the uh, this guy's asked is probably the follow up question, which is going to give him more context. Which is like, do you do you think your one thousand lot trades have a chance of being manipulated by your broker, and and or will they, you know, are you are you, are you worried about stop hunts? Yeah, I mean, a great question. I mean, you have to remember that you know you've got uh, brokers out there. You know, some brokers have a B book, which means that they uh, they will trade their own positions based upon their open positions and make money. You know, that's uh, uh, interesting one of ethics, I guess. But um, yeah, that's that's not something uh, that my broker does. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not interested in them looking at my positions per se, because firstly, I don't use stops and I never have them. Uh, so that was one of the big points I made. So I'm not going to get stopped out of a position and ever think they're going to manipulate it. Well, the markets are a little bit too big to manipulate it. Listen, don't get me wrong. I mean, you have to remember that when you trade big size, uh, that's when you have to have trust in your broker because, you know, you have to be able to kind of, you know, hit the market and to get those good fills, especially when the market's moving quickly. So that's why I've only ever re really worked with two retail brokers because I do trust them and trust is a big element. Uh, I'm not going to say that I haven't had my, you know, uh, times when the market slowed and I've got a bad fill. Uh, that's part of trading. Uh, but again, my strategy and the way I trade is I'm never trading one position. So it's not like I'm just trying to get all of one price. I'll be putting big positions, maybe, you know, hitting that, you know, thousand lot uh, aggregated, you know, position, uh, you know, over 10, 11, 12 trades. And it's not like it's, a, you know, around thousand lots. You know, I don't have a specific number that I'm focusing to get on. As I've explained to you, you know, before in the in the previous interview, my idea and the way of trading is I want to get involved in the, the meat of the move when the, you know, the kind of the real, you know, it's, it's either started or it's just becoming to end. So, you know, you're kind of, you're getting the, the most of your size doing the opposite of what the market's doing. So you get that pullback in the market and you're covering your other positions. So really it's almost breaking that down because, you know, you are limited when you trade big size, you can only clip a certain amount. So I'm never just doing one clip at one price with a five pip stop trying to make 10 like traditional traders. I'm putting my size and, and my kind of aggression and speed of trading into areas uh, of, of the market where I see value. And again, you know, when these kind of things multiply up, the majority of clicks I'll do will be at the final point. So I might click the button three, four, five times in quick succession. I don't necessarily think, you know, I'll get filled or hit on everything because if you, you know, at that price, and when you see the markets, especially these like the, the big red candles, the big green candles, you know, all of a sudden you'll see them down here. That's not necessarily what you see on your screen is exactly what's being translated into what's happening behind the scenes. You know, we're not direct market access. OK, we're not like, you know, we're hitting each price and getting each price because we're, we're, we're directly, you know, the bid and the offer in trading. We're trading, you know, kind of simulated prices within a retail environment. So I'm just looking for that. And I might, you know, get, you know, da -da 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 -da, I'm clicking. And I might be like, I'm, I'm trying to get 300 lots off and I might get filled on 220 and I might get partial fills, you know, and it might be exactly what I want. But hopefully, you know, if I've been aggressive at the, the point of the markets where it's starting to turn, I'm getting in while people are getting out. And if I'm just quick enough, that can work in my favor. So a lot of it's trading by feel. You know, it's not trading by I will put, you know, an, an order here and I want this price, you know, limit and I want to get out here. That's not how I trade. You know, it's much more fluid. It's much about using my account size, you know, my 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 style, my aggression, my belief in, you know, my uh, ability to to read the markets and my ability to do things at the right time, as which I've, I've quite often, you know, coined. It's not about being necessarily right on every part of trading. You know, if I can get enough size into areas where I know people are going to be getting out and are wrong, I can turn my trade back, get on side, because I'm always expecting my trade to be offside. This is the point. I'm not trying to get my trade, run it for 10 ticks and get out. That just isn't my style. It never has been. I'm almost like um, a pain monger. I want that pain to come. I want the market to try and squeeze me because that's when I know I can put my size in, use that for my, my own benefit and, and getting in. It's a very personal way of trading. That's why I don't necessarily teach people to trade how I trade. My trading style has, has, has evolved over the years. You know, I used to be you know, trading big size, but direct market access. So I, you know, lead on the, the bit of the offer and I do begin and I'd be getting out, you know, pip by pip and the market wasn't doing much. But that's trading, you know, big size in the bund or the shafts, you know, this is to, back to, you know, trading you know, in the prop houses. 
well, that's what you did, you know, just eat to living by, you know, by, by using your direct market access. The way you have to trade now on, on a retail kind of perspective, it's quite different, I think, because you have got the algos, you have got the manipulation, you have got the, the, the hedge funds, you have got the big size coming through. And, you know, you have to use that to your advantage. So if you're just a, you know, a, a 5, 10, you know, pip trader trying to gain that onside uh, with, a, with a stop and being, you know, very regimented, you know, protecting your capital, doing all the right things. I've found that for the majority of people, that's death by a thousand cuts that, you know, you still get wiped out eventually. Uh, you just don't have much fun or make much money in the process. Whereas I'm all about less having fun these days, but 100% about making the money. So I know if I can get enough size into the markets, um, I can make money. And that's why I use this open risk. And I, I talk about, you know, when the, the professionals out there that have never made any money trading, uh, they're these, these, pro, these educators and experts. That's the worst the word, the word of the moment, isn't it? Experts. Everyone's an expert. But, you know, I want to be talking to the guy that sat there making the money. And that's, that, that's someone like me. So, again, it's all about, for me, getting that size in, you know, being able to kind of take that pain on, get, get out. And you're not looking for a full retrace, but you're looking for the full part of the move, just a meat of the move, get it going. And with, with that stacking, you know, and putting the biggest size at the extreme of the trade, you've got a very good chance of always getting out for a, a, a good win, a scratch, uh, before giving that money back if you are wrong. And that's what I would say the difference with my trading is. It's, it's being prepared to be wrong at first, back yourself, take the pain, and then take you know take the profit from that. But I'm never looking for a full reversal. I'm never going to be the guy that's you know 300 lots on side and 1,000 lots because that's not how I trade. I see the money. I take it generally the first time it's offered, and then I'll either look to do the trade again or I'm out. I'm done for the day. You know That's, again, the time versus, versus money kind of argument. It's interesting. You've sort of what you've said there has led on to the next question and, and the question after. Um, you, you did touch on it, like so. The question is around, you know, do you have problems executing big big volumes and or closing them um, because of the broker trying to, you know, struggling to find enough liquidity fast enough for you? I mean, so do you want to give us like an example, maybe? Because you have said that, yeah, sometimes you don't get filled yep. um, for everything. I mean, how often does that happen? And especially like closing trades, is that an issue with? you know, giving back profit when you're trying to get out of, you know, your close all button? Very, very good questions. Both very good questions. Yeah, I mean, I don't have much, too much trouble getting filled because, again, you know, it's um, I'm, I'm generally going, you know, kind of against the market. So that there's plenty of liquidity there and um, I've not really kind of found too much problem. The old partial fill, and again, that comes with me. You know, if, if I'm pressing that button, you know, 80, 80, 80, 80, you, you know you're not going to get filled and everything. And you know that there will be some broker, you know, kind of, you know, maybe slippage there. And that's just part of trading. That's fine. I've accepted that. You, you're exactly right, though, with the close all button. Um, that is um, something that you have to be careful of your account type. And when you try to cl close a, a big position like that, yes, you can see delays. And sometimes I will hit the close all button. And if it's not working, I have an override and I can just manually go in and close them because that is the whole thing about how you plan your exit strategy as well. And it's not about a level. It's not about an exact amount of money. It's about a feeling. So it's like, I know when I press that close all button, I'm, I might need to give myself five seconds to be able to get out of that trade. And five seconds in trading can be an eternity. It can be a lifetime. So when you see the market moving, that's when I've said to you about this whole take the profit the first time it's, it's offered. And I stopped looking at the screen and I stopped looking at the chart because that's irrelevant. I watch the P&L because that P&L, that's my P&L. That's my interaction with the market, my money. And that's what I'm doing. And that's what you've got to focus on. Because if you think, oh, I'll just click at this level, I'll get out. And that's brilliant. Well, then five seconds later, you're pressing it. You don't get the fills you want. The markets come down and opposite. You might have even lost money. So it's a whole strategy about being very, very aggressive to get in, but being equally as aggressive to get out and watching those P&Ls. And it's almost, I watch how the numbers move on the P&Ls. This is how deep you can go into trading because, you know, sometimes you'll see your P&L flip by two, three, four, five, six thousand, and it jumps. And that, again, is that interaction on the back end of the market that might not necessarily be translated into the candles that you've seen because everything's going to catch up and have a lag. So I'm looking for that money to change. I'm looking for that P&L to flick. And I just get that feeling. I'm like, I want to be taking it now because I don't want that market to take my money away from me. I'd rather take it here and risk a little bit of slippage or even be lucky. It maybe jumps in my favor because we've all seen and we've all seen those candles where it's all candle closes. And it's like, brilliant. I'm going to absolutely smash it here. 
full retracement in the first, you know, like 30 yes. seconds, that candle, <laughs> gaps. And that's the whole point because other people are looking to get out, other people looking to kind of reverse the trades. And, you know, I trade big size, but hey, you know, I'm not that big. You know, compared to the market, I'm minuscule. So for me, it's always about, you know, being respectful of the market and pressing that button in not plenty of time. It's a real fine art, but pressing it and just saying, yeah, I want to get out before anything turns. And that's a real key thing that a lot of traders lose their money on. And I've said to you before about leaving money on the table. It's criminal. And how many people have left, you know, so much money on the table in a trade and then had to turn that scalp into a position trade and then it goes wrong. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's that whole vicious cycle of trying to get more out of the markets than the offer. And that's why I love trading the way I do in size because – you know, if I do get on side, it's generally money worth taking. You know, anyone can get a trade ten pounds on side. Getting a trade ten grand on side, not many people. In, 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 the, in terms of like clicking that close all button, how often do you think it would fail to close everything, and you'd have to go to your plan B? I mean, it's really very rare. I mean, generally, I don't get involved too much in data anymore, so I'm not trading when the markets are too too volatile. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trading when the markets are making reasonable moves and they're backed up by reasonable size. So that's, that's again, another kind of key tip for traders. You can be involved in non-pound perils and be 50 pips on side one second, then it's gone the next. You know, you physically see the money, but never get it. And that's the most frustrating thing for me. So I'm always trading, you know, again, primarily the DAX, gold, you know, the bigger FX pairs and being able to kind of, you know, load into that size, knowing I can get out. And that's, again, why I don't trade miners. I don't trade individual stocks uh, and that kind of things because i'm looking for that you know institutional you know kind of size and the correlation of the markets to be able to you know get the size in it and, and more importantly get it out because what's the point of trading if you can't get your money out yeah and so so the other question that sort of flowed on and you've mentioned it a couple of times which is i, I don't know if you know if it was a question it might have just been a, a somebody like trying to be a bit snarky in the comments but it was like yeah. how can you how can you trade only uh how can you how can 1,000 lots lot trades only make 10 to 20K? And then they sort of went on to say that maybe it was 100 lot trades and they'd misheard. But No, it's not 100 lot trades. No, that's, that's what I, I clip. You know, I clip 80 lots. Um, I'm not looking for the entirety of the move. I've told you, if I wanted to be the richest guy in the world of Warren Buffett, then, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I could have been. But that would involve, you know, very long-term positions, holding things for days, weeks, and months. And I've said, I'm not an investor. I'm a trader. I'm a scalper. And if you, you know, don't think 10, 20 grand is a, is a lot of money uh, for a thousand lots, then I don't know. I don't really understand the, the question, really. I'm, I'm looking to take the profit the first time it's offered. If I want to do the trade again, I can. But if you can nick 10, 20 grand a couple of times a day, that's how I make my money. And I do that every day, every week, every month. I have bad months. I have uh, trades that go wrong. Um, but every year, for the last 20 years, pretty much I've made I've made money. So that's how I do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, yes. You know, but this is the other thing. It's like, these are, you know, like these comments, I love them because I never read the comments because I'm too old. I'm too grumpy. I've been there, done it, got the T-shirt. I don't owe anyone anything. I do all my education for free and I'll, I'll talk to people for free. You know, so I don't owe the world anything. So if you want to be the kind of guy that's down the pub and puts a footsie one lot on and, and does 100 points and, and makes yourself 100 quid, that's great. Yeah, you can sit there in front of your screen checking your phone. That's great because that's what little people, little traders do. When I see 10, 20 grand on my screen, I've made it in maybe minutes, I take it and I put it back into my account and I go and do something else or maybe look for another trade. That's what I do. I take money from the markets, put it in my bank and then... You know, there's plenty of people out there that never be able to make 10, 20 grand. People will never take the swings I've taken. People will never trade the accounts as I've traded. And it's all being, you know, back to this kind of principles of how much money does it take to run your life and make you, you know, the person you are. I, You know, I yes, would I like to make 10 million a year? Yeah. Would I like all the stress that came with it? Probably not. I've reached the limit of what I'm happy with, time versus money, okay? So I'm a time billionaire, no doubt about that. I've got all the time in the world. I don't work for anyone, never really have, done whatever I wanted, and I'm happy. For me to take my trade to the next level and make a 1,000 lots, you know, trade into what people think that should be worth, maybe hundreds of thousands, it's too much time in the market, it's too much stress, and I'm not very good at it, okay? Because every time I try and hold a position for longer than an hour, I start to doubt myself, I start to take a view, I start to read too much into it, 
And it just isn't what I enjoy. I enjoy putting size in, getting size out. And that's it. You know, I'm just being honest. That's just how I trade. I'm not trying to get more out of the markets than they're offered for my style of trading. And it took me a long time to come to that conclusion. And I'm happy with it. And if people don't think that, you know, a 10, 20 grand trade is worth with that size or with the risk, then that's fine. You know, it doesn't make any difference. What I like about the markets is we can all have our views. We can all trade our own ways and we can all make money. I'm not out there telling anybody, you know, that they're wrong. I'm not out there telling anybody that they should do it like me. I'm just telling you my, my experience and I'm being honest about it. I've always been honest about it. And yeah, it might be a bit, you know, contrary to, uh, contrary to people, the way I trade and the risk might be sometimes too much. And I've, I've often said, you know, uh, people, you know, uh, look at trading strategies as a two to one risk award. You risk one to make two. I always start with two to make one. Yeah. And maybe go three to make one, four to make one. You know, I'm always using open risk. So it's different. I'm not saying I want to go in here, you know, get out here and risk here. I'm trading a moving open risk position thinking, do I want more size in? Do I want to get more aggressive to cover that position and get out? So as I say, it's a very personal style of trading. And it's, it's, it's just what I do. And uh, you have to have a, a certain mindset, certain account size, certain aggression. And, uh, you know, again, for me, it's all about making the time count. I don't want to be in the trades for a long period of time under any circumstances. And that's not just because I want the time for myself. I just don't want to be involved in the markets for any longer than I have to. It's like danger. Get in, get your size in, get out, be done. And that's what's kind of kept me going for 20 years. Awesome. Good, great answer to that question. Now, the, the last question on this uh, this little segment is sort of around lots. Uh, I've lobbed it in here. Um, do you believe the market is run on a century, central bank algorithm or is it all manual for the most part? And if so, what percentage would you say for both? I mean, you have to remember that the, the, the markets are so incredibly big and complex. You know, we've got so much money floating in the system that's been put in by the Fed, that's been put in by the banks. Uh, and, you know, there is, the, uh, you get into these conspiracy theories, don't you? And like, kind of like, who's really controlling it? You know, the guy with the most money generally wins. Okay. And that's the Fed because they have unlimited money. So generally they're always going to win. So what you've got to understand is, you know, you don't want to fall down that rabbit hole of thinking how these things are put together, how they're controlled, you know, who's, who, who's, who's the big guy that's always making the money. You want to use that. OK, so you want to use it, really, the target of all the central banks, the institutions, uh, all the big players, the target is the retail trader because there's, there's more of them and they're more susceptible to, um, to risk. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, how many times has the retail trader been right on direction and not made money? This is where you get your stats that 80% yeah. of retail traders you know, will lose money in this account. Well, generally, they've got no money and generally they've only done one trade. And they've, they've tried to hold on to a position that went 30, 40, 50, 100 pips offside. It got stopped out. Then the market did exactly what they thought the next day because that's it. The guy with the biggest money that can take the most pain wins. So a hedge fund can take a big position. It can take a big offside position. It can hold it for two or three days, and you can't. But you have to remember all the stuff that goes back to the retail education, all the cornerstone things that are kind of put in place, only risk 1% or 2% of your account on each trade. You know, always have a stop in place. Always do this. Always do that. Read the news that Bloomberg tell you. It's all designed for you to be beat before you even started. This is how the markets beat you because they know exactly what you're doing and they use it against you. So every bank trader that I know, every fund that I've used, it's like, yeah, what do I do? I use my size. I bully people out. You know, I, I make it move quicker. I make one market move out of correlation. You know, and then when people are out, I get back in. And people are like, oh, no, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, but my rules, oh, I'm stopped out. It's just like all these things are happening, you know, for you in real time. For me, they're happening in slow motion. And that's just experience. That's just, just years and years of doing it. And have I had it done to me? Absolutely have had it done to me. Have I been stopped out at the exact pip? Yeah, a million times. But then you think to yourself, you know, if the game is rigged or whatever people want to, you know, kind of call it, then you've got to use that to your advantage. And I've done plenty of webinars in the past how banks trade and, you know, how you use the liquidity, how you use the paper money that's coming into the uh, into the markets for your own advantage. And that's why I average. That's why I expect to be wrong. What, do you think I'm just going to pick the perfect level of my trade to get my big trade in, then take no risk and then just get it out for here? 
it was that easy, we'd all be millionaires, wouldn't we? It isn't that easy. So I'm expecting, even at my level, my experience, to feel some pain. And generally, the faster the pain, the more you know, um, quick the pain kind of comes on, the more aggressive my strategy is going to be, and the more I'll make out of that trade. So the slower the market goes, the more it grinds, the less confident I am because it's the less pain being ejected into the into the market for the retail trader. And they might have the confidence to see where it'll go or they might move their stop or that lovely term, move my stop to break even. Oh, most boring, boring, boring <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Stop to, to break even. You know, if you know you're right, put more into the trade, put more aggression, get your money out. You know, coming back to watch your trade be 50, 60 pips on side, again, you'll only do that on very small size. There's very few people that can do it in any kind of meaningful size. And by the time, you know, going back to your last question of making 10, 20 grand, you'd have to hold your trade for a week to make the money I did. And I'm in and out in, in minutes sometimes. And, and that's, again, that's just the way it works. There's no, there's no other conspiracy apart from everything's a conspiracy. Okay? The world is controlled by... The top 0.01% of people always has been, always will be. That's just the way it is. As soon as you, you accept that and understand it, then the more you can kind of be at peace with yourself. Don't worry about things you can't control. Even with me and my account size, what I can do, I never think I'm bigger than my best or worst trade. I know my place and I've been spanked. I've made a very good living for, for 20 years and I'm happy with that. And I know my limits. I know where I can operate in the markets. And, and, and that's it. That's where you've got to get to as a trader. And that's a combination of time, size, funded by a certain amount of account size, and having a strategy that you can replicate. And, and that's it. That's trading. You know, Forget the 1.3 million views I've had on trading. That last sentence just sums up everything that I know about trading. Hey, guys, ever wonder what broker I use? Well, I use these guys, Henko Trade. Look, it was a no-brainer for me because I was looking for a broker with really good trading conditions and one without any leverage restrictions. Look, also, by joining Henko Trade, I was able to cut my cost of trading significantly with their super low commission of $1 per 100K. Look, if you want to find out more, check out hankotrade.com or there is a link in the description. Brilliant. Awesome. Well, look, guys, we've got more of this coming your way. Uh, we've got probably another three or four, if not five, different little segments here with Steve. So um, stay tuned for that. Now, before we wrap up on this one, Steve, what's the best way for the guys to get hold of you? Well, as always, I mean, uh, you know, just, just Google, Google Steve Ruffley, you know, they can choose the medium you want. Uh, I generally hang out on Twitter. That's where I have my rants and, uh, you know, I kind of uh, put some charts up and, you know, a bit of how I'm feeling. YouTube, obviously through yourself. I have my own channel um, that's got a lot of interviews with me. Uh, quite old ones now, but, you know, good, still relevant stuff. Um, but, yeah, the best way, as always, is just email steve at steveruffler.com or, uh, again, just Google me. And if you can't find a way of contacting me through uh, through just doing that, then uh, you should probably just give up on life and uh, go back and live in a cave <laughs> or something. It's like, there's enough out there to find It's me. probably not the right industry for you. Yeah, right. probably not. Yeah. Guys, um, thanks for watching. Do remember, hit subscribe, hit like, and click on that notifications bell. And if you do want to catch Steve's full interview, there's a link below the video for that and all those links he just mentioned there as well. Guys, we'll see you in the next one. Enjoy.